Advanced Loop Line. In this video, I want to cover the Google Meta Scraper add-on. So what Google Meta Data is, is if you go to Google and we just type up the word car, for instance, and it comes back with all these results, um, you have the title, the URL, and then this like data right here. Now this data can be very useful, and I'll give you an example of a great way to use it, um, or a theory of how you can expand on it anyways, but a lot of people want to be able to get this data here. So what they can do is use the Google Meta Scraper add-on because otherwise you can't get that data in Scrapebox. Now it's pretty easy, it's a free add-on, go to add-ons, show available add-ons, and you find the Google Meta Scraper add-on in the list, and then you click on it and click install. So it's here, click install add-on, and away you go. Once it's installed, it's very easy. You go back to add-ons, Google Meta Scraper add-on, and what we're going to do is then punch in our keywords over here. So same way I can go car and I have to, some different options here. I do have proxies already set up in here. I can go to proxies, use proxies. I can load them from Scrapebox to pull them in. I can unload all proxies and that sort of thing. So it kind of has its own proxy management option here. It doesn't necessarily work off of this, but it can pull from this. So that's proxies, files pretty easy, exit, options, and we have connection settings. I'm going to set connections to one. I do have a video which I'll link to here in the description, which is safely scraping Google. This is a Google product. It's, I mean, it's directly scraping Google. So it's the exact same thing as if you're using the regular harvester here to scrape Google. So you want to bear in mind that if you go too fast, Google will ban your IPs. So that other video talks about how to get that done without banning the IPs and then I have a second video on if you're using like back connect proxies and that sort of thing. So the connection timeout is pretty basic um, and then the receive timeout again these are just great at the default you can run them all the way up to the max if you want. Google's pretty fast though so unless your proxies are really really slow um, then I would just leave them at default. And so the user agent is the user agent that is going to be used by the Google Meta Scraper. If you don't know what a Google, what a user agent is, rather, just Google for that. I'm not going to explain what it is in this video. You can also Google for a list of user agents, but as a general rule, the one that's in here is going to work fine. But if you need to change it, you can. Results per keyword, max 1,000, of course, standard by Google. Sometimes they cut off less than 1,000, especially if you're using advanced queries. And then the delay between the connections zero to turn off I'm just gonna leave it at zero because we're only gonna do really basic stuff here in the video but obviously if you don't have a lot of proxies using private proxies if I was gonna use like a thousand keywords and 50 proxies I definitely want to use one connection with the delay again the other video on safely scraping Google will go over how to figure that out for your particular setup with your proxies but I'm just gonna leave all this as is um, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and start it we do have the option to load keyword from a file load keywords from Scrapebox if I wanted to pull them in from over here so if I scraped up some keywords or I can just type them in or paste them in right here which is what I did um, I can clear it out which I'm not gonna do I'm gonna hit start and give it a second here and what it's gonna do is it's gonna populate these fields and I'm gonna stop it just because I don't need more than this for the video so we have our title here which is just the you know the title right here of the actual list um, each entry and then we have our description which is this segment under here and then we also have the actual URL, which obviously is the URL here. And then if we scroll over, we can see the keyword that was used. So if we have like 100 keywords, we can go down through here and see for each keyword with this export. We can export all this and we can see the keyword match up with the URL and the title and a description, which is pretty nice. So I do have the option to filter. I can remove entries where a title has certain things, where a description has certain things, and where the URL has certain things. And obviously I have load clear and apply options for each one of those. I just left all those blank. If you're getting bad results, this is always a good thing to check because if you happen to have a filter in here, that's filtering out exactly what you want, which I've done before on accident as you change from project to project. That's why. So we can export this and we get a couple of export options. We get export as a text file and export as an Excel spreadsheet. So we also have the option to choose if we want to, which items we want. So I'm just going to leave them all checked. Let's go ahead and export this. Um, and I'm just going to, let's do a new folder here and do video. And uh, we'll just call this Excel because I'm going to export it as Excel. Let me get this loaded up here and we'll go in and look at the video and look at Excel here and you can see we get the nice little title across the top giving us or the descriptor for each thing and then we have all of our entries in nice columns. Now that's how you use the Google Meta Scraper add-on in general to get information. Now some people might be saying okay what do I want to use this for? Now some creative ways to use this would be one example I'm going to use it with LinkedIn. The reason I say this is I've had a lot of people that email me probably 
multiple times a month I field a question of how do I scrape data, scrape emails from LinkedIn. Well, LinkedIn requires JavaScript, I believe, and they require you to log in to see the data. Well, Scrapebox doesn't support authentication, so you can't log in, and it uses raw sockets and threads, which don't support JavaScript, so you just can't scrape the data from LinkedIn. You can't scrape emails. However, Google can get around this. So, of course, Google has billions of dollars to invest on this sort of thing, so we'll let them figure it out. So we're going to do site LinkedIn. I just typed up at Gmail here, and then I'm going to punch in a keyword. So this would be whatever keyword you're after. Again, we're working with cars, so let's just use cars. So we do this. We can see here in the titles and possibly in the descriptions are a bunch of email addresses from LinkedIn that we can get. So let's go over here and pop this in right here, and I'm just going to start this up and let it run and we'll see what we get here so so we grab some stuff and we can see that already in here there's actual email addresses in the description there um, possibly in the titles so now let's export this but let's do it as a text file and we're gonna put it in here back in our same spot I'm just gonna call it text you call it whatever you want and once we save that now we're gonna go back to Scrapebox and we're gonna go to grab check grab emails from local list and I'm going to go back to my video folder here and grab my text file. Note that this only works with text files. It's not going to work with an Excel file. So we saved it as text. We're going to grab it. I'm going to hit start. It found 75 emails. Make sure you don't have a filter again set in here. I was filtering out Gmail addresses and obviously that would take out everything. So again, make sure your filters are clear. I'm going to export this. I'm going to go back in here to my video folder and I'm just going to call it emails and then let's pull our folder back up and look at the emails file and here we have 75 emails that we were able to scrape from LinkedIn based on our keyword without having to worry about scraping the data directly from LinkedIn because we can't do that with Scrapebox anyways. So you could apply this to all kinds of sites. You can apply this, obviously we could do uh, at gmail.com, at yahoo.com, at hotmail.com, at whatever.com with your particular niche that you're looking for. You could just do um, some other creative things perhaps to get emails if you have particular domains you're looking for you know this isn't limited to just emails either you can do this to get other data from behind um, areas that you can't get to directly with Scrapebox you can get other data obviously you may or may not be able to scrape that data with Scrapebox directly but even if you get that data even if I were to take this and export it as an Excel file I still have all these emails in here and you know a VA could go in and do this or I could use some regex in Excel which I'm not an expert at, but I know it can be done um, to pull this sort of data out. So and you can get this kind of work done really cheap, like on Upwork or somewhere like that. So this is just some ideas to throw out there about how you could creatively use this metadata from Google to get information that you may not otherwise be able to get. So that is how you can use the Google Metascraper add-on from Scrapebox. Thanks for watching this Scrapebox video. For more Scrapebox videos, click the subscribe button down below and then click the bell. And then check out these other great Scrapebox videos.